So in this lesson, we're going to consider hypothesis testing for the difference between two population means when the population standard deviations or variances are known to us. Now down here we have a summary of how to calculate the test statistic, the p-values, and the uh, critical regions. And you'll see that for this type of test, we use the normal distribution. Notice the Z here. And over here, when we calculate the p-values via Excel, we use the normal distribution function. Now this case isn't as common as the previous cases that we looked at, because here you are assuming that you know the population standard deviations or variances. That's usually not the case, but in some instances you may uh, assume that you know the population variances or standard deviations. Uh, for example, if you're working in a factory and you make some changes to some machinery, those changes might affect the mean of some measurement of the product being produced, but it might not affect the variance in the outputs. So you can assume that you know, after you make the adjustments to the machine that you don't change the variances and you only change the means. But that's not oftentimes the case. So for this hypothesis test, uh, N1 and N2 are your sample sizes that you take from your two populations. X1 bar, X2 bar are the sample means again. Mu1 and Mu2 are the unknown true population means that you want to compare. And then mu naught is the hypothesized difference between the population means, mu1 and mu2. Now here's our test statistic. Right here's how we calculate it. So notice we just take the difference of the sample means, subtract the hypothesized difference between mu1 and mu2, that's the mu0 right here. And then we divide by this quantity, the square root of, and this involves the population variances, uh, each one being divided by the sample size. And then once you calculate this test statistic, you can then calculate the p-value using one of these three commands, uh, depending whether it is a two-tailed test, a right-tailed test, or a left-tailed test that you're using. And also, once again, notice that your null hypothesis, they're all the same. The null hypothesis is mu1 minus mu2 equals mu0. And then for the two-tailed test, uh, your alternate hypothesis is that mu1 minus mu2 does not equal mu0. Right tail test is that mu1 minus mu2 is actually bigger than mu0. And the left tail test is that mu1 minus mu2 is actually less than mu0. Okay, uh, let's take a look at an example now. And this is going to be from web work. So here's our problem. We have two independent samples have been selected uh, from two different populations. 82 observations from population 1 and 97 observations from population 2. So those are the N1 and the N2. Let's just take note of that. So N1 is going to be 82 and N2 is 97. Now the sample means have been calculated to be 10 and 6.7. Now from previous experience with these populations, it is known that the variances are 37 and 25. Uh, those are the variances. Uh, we don't need the standard deviations, but if you wanted them, of course, you could just take the square root of those two numbers. Okay, so uh, this problem is asking us to perform a hypothesis test then down here. It set up the null and alternate for us. So the null hypothesis is that the difference between the two means is 
2.49 and we want to test that against the alternate that the difference between the means is actually bigger than 2.49. Notice in this test up here if we take the difference between the sample means 10 minus 6.7 Of course, that is a 3.3, right? So, uh, of course, 3.3 is larger than 2.49. But the question we're addressing here is, is this significantly larger than 2.49 in order to reject our null hypothesis right here? So that's what we're testing. We're, we're testing to determine uh, if that 3.3 is significantly larger than 2.49. Okay, so um, you see here part A, um, web work has us calculating this quantity. This is actually the denominator of your test statistic, right? Uh, so that's the first thing we want to calculate. Uh, so, of course, that answer is just going to be um, the square root of 37 divided by 82 plus 25 over 97. And if you evaluate this on your calculator, you'll end up with 0 0.84 one nine nine three okay that's what we get for that quantity so let's just enter that into web work here now for the second part of this problem uh, we want to determine the rejection region for this test now you'll notice that uh, this is a right tail test because of this the direction of this inequality right here. This is going to be a right tail test and the significance level is given to us to be 0 0.01. Now for a right tail test the rejection region looks like this. It's z larger than the critical value z alpha. So this is what we need to calculate and that goes right in this slot right here. Okay, so recall to calculate Z alpha. The XL command for that is equals norm. Uh, actually, it's going to be negative norm dot inverse of 0 0.01 comma 0 comma 1. That's going to be the command that you type into Excel for a right-tailed critical value. Okay, uh, let's just open up Excel and I'll show you how to do that here. So here we have Excel open, just uh, pick any cell. And we pick the norm.inverse and then we want the probability that is the 0 0.01 comma 0 comma 1 we're using the standard normal distribution here and there is our value 2.32635 or rounded to uh, 2.33 is what you'll commonly see uh, but for web work just to play it safe we're going to enter it in as 2.32635 so let's just copy that and we'll go back here and that is our critical value. There we go. Okay, now we have to calculate the test statistic. Okay, so recall from the uh, previous slide back here, um, this is our test statistic right here. So let's calculate that out. So our test statistic is just going to be
And so there is our test statistic right here. Uh, notice that this is x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu naught, right? The 2.49, that is our mu naught right there. And then divided by the uh, quantity that we had calculated from part A right there. And when you uh, evaluate that, you're going to get 0 0.962004. So that is our test statistic. And let's just type that in right here. So there's our test statistic. And now since uh, our test statistic right here does not fall in the critical region, that is you see this 0 0.962004 is actually less than 2.33, it's not bigger than 2.33. So this does not fall in the critical region, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we already have that selected right here. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis based on where the test statistic falls. Now we could have calculated the p-value for this problem as well. Uh, web work doesn't want the p-value in this case, but let's calculate it anyway. And we'll see that we will get a number larger than 0 0.01, our significance level. And so we will fail to reject the null hypothesis based on that as well. Now remember the uh, command for the uh, p-value is given by this for Excel. Now this problem was a right tail test because we had mu1 minus mu2 larger than 2.49. So the Excel command that we want to use is the second one right here. That's the Excel command we want. With the Z being our test statistic value of 0.96. So let's uh, calculate this and using Excel. So here we have Excel open and we just need to evaluate 1 minus norm.dist. Our um, test statistic, that's what we want here, that was 0.962004. All right, and that is our Excel command for the p-value. And we get 0 0.16802, which is larger than 0 0.01. And so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis based on that as well. Now, the problem also wants us to construct a 99% confidence interval for the uh, for the difference between the population means. And they give us the formula right here. So you see we have the x1 bar minus x2 bar plus and minus this quantity right here. The sigma here is the value from part A. Now the z alpha over 2, well we use the same procedure to calculate that as we did z alpha, but instead of 0 0.01 we use half of that, so we just have to take that number and you know, divide that by 2 and evaluate this quantity right here. So let's go back to Excel and do that. And then we just have to remember what this number is and type it in right here. And then that will be our the endpoints for our confidence interval. So if we go back to Excel here. Now to calculate the Z alpha over 2, uh, all we have to do is modify this quantity right here. I'm just going to copy that somewhere else and then modify it. You see all we need to do is divide the 0 0.01 by 2. There we go. Okay, so that's the z alpha over 2. Now, uh, we just need to calculate the left and right hand endpoints for our confidence interval. So remember the formula was x1 minus x2 
there's x1 bar minus x2 bar minus z alpha over 2 is in cell E6 times and then the uh, sigma value from part A that was 0.841993 now just copy this over to another cell and then we need to change that F to it back to an E because it got changed when we copied to the right and we need to change that minus to a plus and there right there is our right hand endpoint and then we can just copy those right into the web work problem right there and right there and there you go um, so that's all of our uh, answers that we needed to enter for web work and so that completes this example where we performed a hypothesis test for the difference of two means when we assumed that the population standard deviations were known.